You're listening to the Data Center Hawk Podcast, where we demystify the data center market. Data Center Hawk is your online platform for data and commentary on the data center market. Stay tuned and be sure to join the thousands of others who rely on Data Center Hawk to make decisions in the data center space. Welcome to the Data Center Hawk Podcast, where we help you make better decisions in the data center space. This is our Q4 2021 Data Center Market Review. I'm joined as always by Data Center Hawk founder and CEO, dual role, David Liggett. Hello, Michael. Great to be with you today on this approaching cold Dallas day. Yes. This is a quick intro for those of you joining us. Uh, we are Data Center Hawk. We track the data center sector of commercial real estate. You can find more information at datacenterhawk.com. Click any of the links below. We'd love to meet you and talk with you and understand what you're needing in the space and how we can help. We are not live today because of some weather that's moving into the Dallas area that's going to maybe prevent us from being in the office tomorrow. So we are pre-recording this. However, we still will be taking your questions through the chat and answering them through the chat or maybe follow up with you offline afterwards. So leave the questions in the chat and we'll follow up there. We promise the same level of excellence. A uh, level of Re excellence. Regardless it is of, one of our core values. Yes, pre-recorded or not. So Yes. All right, so before we get into Q4 review, David, let's yes. talk PTC. PTC. That is the Pacific Telecommunications Council, not a conference. That's right. It is a conference that's put on by the council. That's right. It could be PTCC, I guess, if they really wanted to. Yes. Doesn't matter. All right, so we were there. We were. Needless to say, it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was first time attender. Uh, right. But I'd love to hear from your thoughts. Like, Give us a little bit of a... Of a a preview, yes. or a recap of the of the uh, week there. Yes. Well, I think most people that are there, uh, you know, appreciate the getting to have meetings where you're sitting outside looking at the beach and that kind of stuff. So that was awesome. Uh, I think that my takeaways are, you know, number one that uh, a lot more people were there than I think I believed would be. So that was encouraging, just given some of the challenges related to traveling today and those type of things. Two would just be the you know, we met with a lot of people. I bet we had over 40 meetings in three days uh, with, you know, data center operators, investors, consultants, users that are in the space. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I think there's a there's just a very um, f like fresh, exciting tone in the space right now. I think people are very um, encouraged by the growth that's happened and the opportunities that are coming uh, for the market in the next several years. And, um, you know, some of those just peaked their head up at the end of the uh, of 2021, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But overall, it was it was great to be with, um, you know, all the people that we spent time with. So if you were there, if you're watching, you're there. Uh, that was it was a great uh, event. And I think that, you know, hopefully signals that these events will start happening more and more, you know, as we get back to things being more like they were, you know, uh, before 2020. More like they were sounds pretty awesome. That's right. So Come we on. would love to see you there in 2023, year of our Lord, Gosh. 20 and 23. All right, last thing I want to call it is our Data Center Hawk swag. This is designed <laughs> by David Leggett. I don't know if you <laughs> yeah. all know this, but it's a very nice swag, so check it out. Uh, it's very simple. Very happy. It's very comfortable, too. Oh. And it's good for layering, which is I one line. I aim to please, so. All right, you do, too. All right, let's start with North America. Yes. All right, so I think after 2020, a lot of people, including us here at Data Center Hawk, expected a little bit of a pullback. Yeah. Can I use that word? Um, we were pleasantly surprised to yep. see that that did not occur. Uh, so what did 2021 look like as compared to 2020, specifically focusing on Q4? Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think the biggest takeaway would be the demand surge that we saw in 4Q 2021 in North America, uh, you know, basically was, was three times the eight quarter trailing average uh, from an absorption standpoint, which uh, is a lot. Uh, you know, we we saw the the demand um, interested in in the primary markets. You know, we always talk about Northern Virginia. You know, 2020 was a record breaking year for absorption in Northern Virginia. 2021 basically matched 2020, uh, and those two years outpaced 2018, which was the largest Northern Virginia year uh, by almost 100 megawatts. So. Uh, a lot of activity happening in Northern Virginia. Chicago was equal to what it was last year, which was a record-breaking year. Dallas, uh, the demand in Dallas was was um, you know 192 percent increase year over year. Phoenix was 114 uh, percent increase. Portland only 320 wow, percent year over year it. growth. Dang it, it really helped me. Uh, it's, you know, Portland. it's a it's a smaller market, but uh, certainly growing it. And even if you if you look outside of that, if you look at areas like Houston. Uh, Portland, uh, we talked about Portland, Houston, Toronto, um, there's a lot of interest in those markets. So I think 2021 and the and 
certainly the the end of it will be marked by the demand that took place. Yeah, I know. Like typically, when we're having these types of conversations, it's it's kind of hyperscale only. Yep. Uh, or hyperscale dominant. Yes. So I think we saw that change. Yes. A little bit this year or 2021 in, in general, and probably focused towards the second half of the year. Let's talk about some of the different demand drivers that are coming in, coming through. Yeah, I mean, I think the you know the the enterprise market you know, banks, technology companies, insurance companies, uh, the, they're back in the market. In fact, they're, they're back with larger requirements than we've seen take place in the past. So, so what may have in the past been maybe like a one to four megawatt is now you know, one four, to 10. Yeah. Kind of, you know, them yeah, in that range. four to six, you know, four to eight. I mean, there's multi-site. definitely, yes. Yeah. And that's, and that's unique for our space. We just have, we did, certainly didn't see that in 2020. Uh, so that's a, that's a big change. All right, so, so with all that demand, you know, that kind of leaves the supply side an interesting point. So, you know, we look at the markets, the 23 markets we track in North America, 10 of those are at their lowest vacancy rate ever. Well, yeah. since we've been tracking. Yeah. Uh, and another three of those are at like their second lowest. Yes. So what, what is that going to look like going forward? How is that going to impact, you know, these companies that are trying to meet some of that increased yeah. demand? It, well, it, it, you know, certainly the larger uh, pre-leasing that gets done, you know, we've seen some requirements that take entire sites like off the market. So that... That's that's a big part that's attributing to those low vacancy rates, but it's also the the leasing up of second generation space. You know, this is still a very like young market. So when you think about our industry, you know, some of these deals that were done 10 years ago, like 10 year transactions, you know, now these companies are coming out of that space, they're consolidating. So now you've got, you know, pockets of two to four megawatts that get put back on the market and they sit in facilities that were built 10 years ago. Well, what we saw in the fourth quarter is a lot of that capacity was leased. Mm. Uh, and so now you have requirements that are in the market that where there might have been eight to 10 places they could go, there's only two or there's only three. And two of those might not be in the you know physical location that works for the application uh, or whatever the requirement is. So those things combined have made certainly the North American market um, vacancy rates at their lowest point. So we see a spike in demand. We see a re- reduction in supply. Yep. So my P brain of economics would think that would lead to an increase in pricing. So yes. has that, have you seen that? Is that yeah, a trend we, you see kind of continuing? Yeah, we really try to quantify, you know, where that is happening. You know, in markets like Los Angeles or Northern California, where the real estate's really tight, um, even in some markets like Chicago, we've seen the, the rates stay a little bit higher than some other markets. Uh, but, you know, I have seen a couple of like, three to 5% uh, raises in rates in certain markets. All of these, most of these requirements are nuanced. And so uh, they have multiple market requirements. They have been long, you know, have relationships with data center operators that, that um, span back, you know, dozens of years. So when you think about all of that, it, it makes it hard to compare apples to apples. But if you think about more of the granular, um, you know, parts of these transactions, like escalation rates, you know, that's something that I think will uh, be less negotiable over time, because I think that the the data center operator community is really focused on, hey, how can we continue to uh, fill our, you know, data centers with uh, credit worthy tenants, you know, with leases that are that are growing over time. Yeah, and just to kind of put a a finer point on that, you know, to your point, it is subtle, and there's sub market, and there's a million factors that can go into pricing. But on the whole, you know, we are seeing prices begin to uptick in certain markets yep. as a general trend, yep. which I think is important because we've talked about it, you know, ad nauseum here about the decline in pricing over time and yep. why that's unique and et cetera. So you can go back and certainly go to our podcast, check out those episodes. But all right. So looking forward, North America, um, what are some of the things you've got your eye on for probably called the next 12 months? Yeah, well, I mean, starting off, you know, the S&P 500 grew at 24.3 percent in the fourth quarter. Uh, those companies are the ones that have these enterprise demand, uh, you know, data center demand. And so I think you will see that increase. This is video streaming, video conferencing, uh, gaming, uh, remote work, e- e-commerce shopping, those type of applications are driving that demand. And that will end up obviously in, in data centers. I think the hyperscale demand sizes get even bigger. So I, I believe that over the next 12 to 18 months, we'll see some you know, 100 plus megawatt takedowns mm. uh, in different markets. Uh, I think those uh, that hyperscale demand is actually growing in requirement volume. There's more of those requirements out there than uh, there have ever been. The data center development sites are going to get larger. You're going to see more of an upfront increase in capital needed to complete these. 
And I think we'll see some of you know, those supply chain issues play out in certain places. You know, we'll also see some of the labor challenges that have gone on uh, or that are going on, you know, just ensuring that you have a pathway to deliver your development based on the labor that's available. Uh, I think that will come into play too. So uh, all of those will be factors that, that I think data center development and North America in 2022 will have to work out. Yeah, certainly we'll continue to keep an eye on it and obviously have this podcast in a quarter and the next quarter after to uh, determine if these things have come to pass, That's to right. fruition, as it were. All right, if we look at Europe, you know, I think we saw, you know, some sustained demand 2021, uh, you know, with significant expansion of some yeah. of those markets. But the key, I think, looking at, you know, the second half of the year, probably including Q4, would be some of the push out of demand into secondary markets. Yeah. So talk about, I mean, put some, put some skin on that. Well, even with that, the uh, increased activity in some of these secondary European markets, the, the top five markets grew, you know, at a considerable rate in 2021. Uh, from a supply standpoint, London grew at 14.7%, Paris 14.3%, Frankfurt 22%, Dublin 33%, Amsterdam was in the 5 to 6% range, largely because of the moratorium things that have gone on. But so, so even with that secondary market activity, you're seeing those bigger markets grow. Why are they growing? Well, they're growing because of the hyperscale interest. They're growing because of the enterprise demand. And they're very um, you know, challenging markets to develop capacity in. Uh, and so that's really increased interest um, as well. And I, I think one of the direct impacts of some of those supp supply challenges in larger markets along with the data so sovereignty law laws has increased activity in the markets that we talked about, Milan, Berlin, Oslo, Madrid. You know, those are the geographies that are getting the capital and interest from some of these larger providers. And, and that will remain, it has to, uh, as you know, the Western, you know, both Western and, and Eastern Europe uh, continues to mature from an infrastructure standpoint. You know, again, this is something we've mentioned before, but like the trends that you see in Europe kind of lag what you see in yep. North America on whatever three to five year basis. And this is true for here, like yep. major market kind of establishment, then going out into the small yes. markets. And I think that the other place that is true and kind of on the M&A side, there's some consolidation, yes. there's some um, companies, you know, purchasing other and, and if an inflow of capital coming yes. in as people see the, the opportunity to, um, yeah. to grow in these companies. So I think that it's just an interesting to note is that it's almost like clockwork, you're seeing it happen in Europe the way that has happened in the US. All right, so if you look again, looking forward for Europe, what are some of the things that you think will um, be the trends that persist through 2022? Yeah, based on what you said, and, and just the activity we've seen on the investment side, I think you'll just see continued capital uh, be committed to, to the European data center market as a whole. And these are big projects, you know, 16 megawatts, 36 megawatts, 56 megawatt, um, you know, uh, data center developments that are taking place. So there's just a massive amount of capital that's being mm -hmm. spent in this in this area. So that that is one thing that will continue to happen. Um, I think you'll see the double digit supply growth in secondary markets that we talked about uh, on an annual basis. It might be 18 months, but you'll even see that in some of the markets we didn't mention uh, that have a lot of interest. You know, from the, the European data center market. Uh, I think you will see an increased focus on sustainability. You know, some of the, as these moratorium ends in certain markets, you're seeing the um, communication of, of design standards, uh, efficiency standards that are needed to allow these data center developments to, to actually be delivered. And so because of that, I think you will see sustainability be a key focus. Those in the industry know that, that it is, already is, but it, it will be even more so in order to allow for data center development to take place. You know, the theme that I kind of see throughout really all of this, you know, North America, Europe, APAC, et cetera, is just the the increase in complexity that's required to both, you know, like build, you know, and develop data centers. And I think yeah. there's probably a lot of people thinking like, man, five years ago it was awesome. You should go buy land, probably cheaply, yep. build a data center, maybe cheaply, run it with coal fired power and sure. just and go make money. Yep. And all of those pieces of the transaction have been complicated yeah, that, in the that last five years. Yeah, that environment doesn't exist anymore. And it's it goes back to the comment we said earlier just about how young our industry is. Mm -hmm. And when we were doing this five, 10 years ago, heck, when, I, when we started 15 years ago, you know, this was such a young market. It, you know, the, the renewable conversation was really at its infancy. Mm -hmm. And it's it's matured so much 
you know, the idea that land sites just exist and power is out there and you can build a data center anywhere um, is becoming less and less uh, true just because of the amount of infrastructure and ability to deliver that to these buildings and sites needed. Yeah, and again, this is, I don't think, necessarily unique to the data center industry, but there are some things that are unique, specifically the power demands, yep. some of the technical supply chain issues, you know, like the power usage stuff with, with community pushback and the, the data sovereignty laws. So those yes. are some things that are unique. So, th and those are some of the things that are more, more pronounced in APAC. So let's go ahead and yeah. pivot there, like my yep. segue. Uh, that was great. So talk about some of the trends that are, that are kind of impacting the APAC markets. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the cloud and hyperscale interest in these markets is, is you know, as relevant today as it's ever been. Uh, and it's one of the reasons we're seeing like increase in under construction uh, capacity in certain markets, uh, seeing pre-leasing when, when we can't, but like Hong Kong is a good example. We've really seen uh, the under construction capacity amount grow, you know, from, you know, 20 megawatts, you know, at the beginning of the year, all the way up to you know, the eighties or nineties. Um, you know, we, uh, one thing that happened in January that was really interesting was Singapore's trade and industry minister communicated that, that they believe they'll be lifting the moratorium that's been there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think that's a really encouraging sign. There are those, that's great and all, but like, you still got to have land. There. Yes. Yeah. And then <laughs> you so lift the moratorium all you want, but there's a little tight on the land. Market yes. There. And that's, so that's one of the things that has to be considered, you know, in the midst of. Uh, even when you receive good news like that from a development perspective, but but there will be design standards and efficiency standards to meet that uh, those needs. Um, and and then I think you you know we're also seeing like planned power increases in different markets. So this is just the way we track this is just uh, data center developments that will uh, be developed over you know the next five to ten years. And so we've seen Sydney's a good example. Uh, you know in Q4 2020 we were at, at 16 megawatts. Uh, you know, in Q4 21, we we're 92. So a significant jump in, you know, planned projects there. Yeah. And that's, if, Sydney's a great market. I mean, almost, you know, I would almost liken it like a Phoenix, like mm -hmm. plenty of land, plenty of power. Let's not talk about water in Phoenix for now. But then like on the political side, you know, not only has Sydney, I think, benefited from the political, contrary to some of these other APAC markets, but that the political, uh, you know, you have to have your data be housed in country, staffed by people who are you know, Australian citizens or what have you. That that is really going to, I think, driving some of the growth there. Because yeah. And in, in like Phoenix, you see that kind of spike in planned power. Yeah. Everyone's eyes kind of open at the same time. They go, okay, this is a great market to be in. Yeah. Then you see like, everyone kind of goes to buy. That's that. right. And it's also the, you know, I always say like the data center operator community is at the tip of the spear for a lot of these requirements. And mm -hmm. so they, as they listen to customers, as one should do when, you know, in, in a uh, business, you know, you're trying to figure out where they need to go down the road so that you can be there. So those are typically signs that exactly what you're saying, that, that the growth is, is headed that way. And, you know, those are, but, but there's also, you know, areas like uh, Korea, India, uh, Malaysia, Japan, that, you know, are, heavily active, not just from a user perspective, but from a, uh, a, a, a development side of things. And so I would say, you know, as we think about things to watch for in 2022, those markets will continue to uh, see a heavy amount of data center, uh, you know, capital or investment uh, from a data center side of things, as well as like pre-leasing rates as development sites are established. I think, I think you'll see the pre-leasing rates increase in APAC mm -hmm. over the next 12 to 18 months, just given the challenges at times to deliver supply. All right, Dave, we'll appreciate your thoughts as always. Hope this has been helpful to you, the listener. Again, put your questions in the chat below. We'll get as many as we can. Uh, so again, this was intended to be a, a nice overview. If you want additional detail on any of the markets we talked about today, go to datacenterhawk.com. Uh, you can do a trial of the site. You can talk to someone from our team uh, who can get you the overview and talk to you about uh, getting access to that additional information. Other than that, we'll see you guys next time.